actually dreamt of making millions. Dreamt. <laughs> okay. Really intended and want to make millions. So it's kind of strange that today my topic is about the million dollar formula, but I have never in my life wanted to make a million. The first time I wrote down one million and counted the numbers to check that it was right, I actually shivered like, wow, is this even possible? So making a millions was never my dream at all. But there is this uh, one quote that I found um, later on in my life that I thought was really, really very powerful and interesting. And that is by the late Jim Ron. Becoming a millionaire, not for the million dollars, but for who you can become along the way in making that million. So my journey, which is what I'm going to be sharing today, is about uh, how did I, how did I get that? How did I make that million when I didn't even have that intention to want to make that million? And today is about not just million, but having the $10 million sales. And this is the exact um, topic that NUS and SMU, you know, the, un, uh, the, the, po the graduate students, the department or whatever, they invited me to speak on this topic because they wanted me to inspire the business students. Like, how did I do it? And many, many times people will always want to know, what is that formula? How did you do it? Like, you know, make the money, make the money. How did you do it? How did you get up on all these different stages at the UN and everywhere else and be this like celebrity nutritionist, study TV shows, write these books, be on new, um, United Nations, Wall Street Journal, blah, blah, blah. I can go on, okay? And another, Harvard, speak at Harvard. Number one influencer. And at that time, Mr. President was somewhere around the list of number 15, I think. Right? Sorry, Mr. President. I don't know how the current one is doing. But this is my results. So I've made my sales. I've made my money. And people always like to invite me to speak about this topic. The invisible formula, right? The eight-figure formula. So I kind of like to not talk about the strategies first because all these things that people look at me and when they see that I'm like accomplished this, accomplished that, made this, made that, broke this record and that record, the one thing they don't know is the behind the scenes. The behind the scenes of what it actually takes to create such success. Like the ballerina floating around, you see like a wonderful performance, but you don't really see the broken toes. So, I, like despite having studied in two universities, have my postgraduate and all of that, I was actually a school dropout by choice because I didn't want to study at one point in my life. I was more interested in boys than books. <laughs> so, and it didn't help that I didn't have a good relationship with my father, so we didn't talk. Like, we stay in the same house, but we don't talk. The only time we spoke would be when he said, do accounting, do a math. This is what you do. That was it. And there was no, there was his way or the highway. So I just had to follow. I hated accounting, I hated mathematics, like a -math. I want to do arts, I want to do literature, history and stuff like that, but I can't. So I was stuck with that. So there I was going to school, hating it. I was supposed to do my A-levels, like, you know, studying for my A-levels. So I did the unthinkable, which was set for the exams. I sat for the exams because my father wanted me to sit for the exams. So I sat. I fill up my name, my index number, and I didn't write anything else. <laughs> so it was all <laughs> empty. We have to have this half an hour grace, like before you could leave. So I just waited half an hour exact. I turned in the paper. It was nothing in there. Obviously, I scored zero for both. I got a great welcome to the principal's office. 
and then a good pep talk and says that like that's it you're out so I said please give me another chance you know I really want to do lit and history and all of that she said no out you go so out I went I didn't tell my dad eventually he found out but he didn't talk to me so not talking times not talking equals not talking so that was good so that he didn't talk to me but I knew he was disappointed but he was just not talking so I was living in my own life freedom Okay, so freedom to do whatever that I want, which means like I tested everything. I've always wanted to be a teacher, but I, with that, I have no qualification. So I ended up being a childcare teacher and then um, collecting vomit, <laughs> showering 10 kids, changing their diapers for like, I think $300 a month at that time. And I switched different careers, right? Worked in the factory, didn't like it. Work at 7-Eleven, midnight, sunshine, no, sunrise, shift, whatever. Didn't like it. But I was here, I was there, but I was nowhere. But I was happily rebellious because this is my life. But it was, it sucks, right? And um, finally, like, this thing shifted my life. This one thing shifted my life. And I wish I can tell this to every father in the planet. That they should do this. So my dad, who had not talked to me for ages, finally, one day, he stood up in front of me. He did now the unthinkable. He stood, he looked at me, and he cried. He just cried. He broke down. I think he just could not take it anymore. And as he looked at me crying, he only said one sentence, and that is, Apa nak jadi dengan kau? Translation, what's going to happen to you? That's all he said. And that's all that I needed to hear. And I knew that he actually really loved me. So at that moment, that very moment when I looked, I, I couldn't say anything. I just looked at him and I broke inside. And I, I looked at him, he was so old already. I said, what have I done? What have I done to my father? I've disappointed him so much. So at that very moment, I made a decision. I said, okay, I'm going to retake my A-levels. I'm going to do it as a private student. In my heart, I didn't get to say it out to him. So I did. I registered um, as a private student, took my classes, and then of course, like, you know, took the subjects that I love, and I studied. And I studied on my own. So uh, just before my results came out, my father died of a sudden heart attack. So he just sat on the chair and he just died. Just like that. And that was that night when I just sat crying in front of his dead body, that was when I realized that, like, it was just too late. I cried. I said that I wanted to make you proud of me. I want to make you proud of me. I'm doing my studies. I'm doing my studies. But he was not there anymore. Fast forward, I got my results and it was good enough for me to pursue my nutrition studies, which I've wanted, overseas. So that incident, okay, is the one of the foundation to my success, that million dollar success. What has that got to do with making a million dollar or, or you know, having that kind of sales? I have what is called urgency. Everything is to be done yesterday because I can wait, but my parents cannot wait. So the loved ones cannot wait. So I've always had this sense of urgency in me. So moving forward, I could study now, studying abroad, the second incident that happened in my life pushed me to set the biggest foundation in my life. And that was when I now can study, but we didn't have the money to go. That was 60000 I don't have that kind of money. And when I told my mom, I just wanted to tell her so that she knows that I made it. But when I told her and she said, do you really want to go? And I said, yeah, but we can't. We don't have the money. Mom, we don't have it. It's okay. She said, do you want to study? I said, yes, I do. Then go. I said, how? How much do you need? I said, at least $6,000. Okay, take all the jewelry, pawn all the jewelry, go. I said, then how? Then I'm going to study abroad, you know, like every month I need money. 
and then I have to accommodation, blah, blah, blah. And every few months, you have to pay again and pay again. So you just go. This, this mindset that she has, like, you jump. Jump. But there's no net. How am I supposed to jump? Jump, the net will appear. What? You jump, then the net will appear. <laughs> if the net will appear, then how? Say, don't ask, just go. So I went, I went, and she did it. And she did. What did she do? She worked three jobs a day. She has no education. She cannot read, she cannot write. So my mother is illiterate. So she worked as a cleaner at the Changi Airport, right? 12 midnight to 7 o'clock in the morning, cleaning toilets. Not enough. Uh, condo, okay? 10 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock, 10 to 5. Cleaning the condo area. Not enough. 6 o'clock up to 11 o'clock at Bedok Interchange. People finish eating, wipe the tables, carry the plate. Three jobs a day, seven days a week, three years, non-stop. No MC. No off days. H six zero. 60 years old. No resume. The way she gets a resume, she go to the guard house. Huh? One more kerja. I want to work. <laughs> See, take. <laughs> like that, that's how she gets a job. And she did it. And that's how I graduated. So, I have this in my blood. If you, if you cut me up, this is in my blood. It's like, you don't give any excuse. Like, my mom didn't give an excuse. Oh, I'm so old already. Oh, your father just died. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, this. I have no education. La, 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 la. You're crazy. No, she, it's, it's, there's nothing. That if you really want it, you make it happen. And you need to have that why, that big why, the why that makes you cry. And anything can happen. So that was in me. So that is how it all started, the foundation of my success. But when I came back, I didn't straight away become a million or whatever. But I paused first. That's my mummy. And that's my. this is the only picture I have of my daddy holding me. And it means a lot to me. Right? So daddy, please do that. <laughs> Go back home. No, you don't have to cry in front of your children, no? But give them a big round of applause. I'm going to really fast forward very fast now. I became a teacher five years and then after that, enough is enough. Have two kids. They're not kids anymore. They're teenagers, 18 and 17 now. Right? That was then. And I said, five years of teaching, enough. I want to do something. But what? I don't know. So my mom said, jump and the network. Appear. So I did. <laughs> so I tendered my resignation with eight thousand dollars bond. I had. I was. I was still bonded by the government. I have to pay them eight thousand. I didn't have the money to pay them yet. But I said, never mind. Quit first. Oprah says, follow your passion. The money will come. <laughs> so I did. I quit my job. I opened up a nutrition clinic because I wanted to teach people how to lose weight. I'm, I'm a nutritionist by profession. I lost 20 kg in three months without exercise. So I thought this will be good. I can teach people how to do this. And I did. I opened up the place in six months. I have no customers. Zero. The degree. So what? It's a nutrition degree. I can help people lose 20 kg. I don't even know how to make $20. Right? So it's gone. So six months down the road, I lost $80,000. Okay? Uh, five banks, credit cards, owing them $80,000. So that was my first dip. And that is when I realized that, hey, I'm not stupid. Lah. I'm not stupid. I'm very, very, very hardworking. I sleep in my office even. But why am I not making the money? Because I don't have the right knowledge. So I asked for the key. What is the key? Marketing. I don't have marketing. I don't know how to get clients. So I absorbed marketing skills. I built back my business and I made money. This time I really made good money. I made $250,000 in two years, which is good money. But I lost all of it again. Yes, in bad investments. Yeah, I invested in a gym. I don't even exercise. I don't even know why I opened a gym. I like, I opened a gym. One equipment is $20,000, okay? It's no joke, right? So I remember the day they closed down my gym because I don't know how to run the gym. My equipment is inside. I haven't paid the rent for three months. So all my equipment was inside and they had to sell away all my equipment, including my photocopier and everything. And I was so scared to do anything because the landlord was a lawyer. <laughs> so I, I, I was like, yeah, I went into deep shit. I not only lose, but it was losing a lot. I was in half a million dollar debt. Any one of you can challenge me? Okay, don't. 
It's not a good place to be in. This is a time when I lost money. I went through my divorce. I didn't have a house by choice. I had nothing. I had my first asthma attack. I had hives all over my body. Everything was breaking down, really just breaking down. So at this very moment, I remembered what my mom said. You need to have the why that makes you cry and you will find a way. What was it that was making me cry? My children, they made me cry because they came to me and they would say, Umi, Umi, they say you don't love us. Umi, 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 they say when you die, there'll be a lot of money on your grave. Like, what? Nonsense are they saying to your heads, you know? Because it means if I die, only when I die, then the money will come. Your mom is useless, you know? She's useless. Nothing ever good will happen in her life, right? So I said, is this what I want to see my kids growing up, talking like this about me? I said, no, I'm not going to allow my children to grow up and looking at me like a useless piece of shit. No, I'm not going to do that. So what did I do? I had some money left that was supposed to pay an overdue rent. I didn't. I packed my bags. I went to the US. I flew all the way to the US. What was I looking for? Mentorship. Somebody to knock my head, open up my head, Clorox me. Please, like I surrender. There must be something that I don't know that I don't know. That's why my life is not working. If it's not working, means something is not working inside. But I cannot see. It's a block. There's a blockage. So I got a coach, a mindset coach. Not only mindset, but I also got... A business coach. So I went for internet marketing course. This is Marie. Uh, her name is Marie. She was the one 10 years ago stood up and said that if you want to make it, if you want customers, you got to use this. She said it's going to be the biggest thing. She said it's going to be the biggest thing and it's called Facebook. I had a Facebook account but I don't know how to make money. She had a course. It's a $3,000 course. I have no money. I went to this course. I didn't eat, okay? When I was in the US, I did not eat because I don't have money. I was hungry, not here, here. So I came back, I said, okay, fine. She said Facebook, right? Facebook, right? Okay, I have Facebook account. I'm going to do something with Facebook. I don't know what, but I did the steps, which I will be sharing with you very quickly later, what I did on Facebook. And I became a Facebook queen in my territory. I have people following me. Who are the people? Women mainly. Women who are broke, broken. And they say, we, you know, help us, help us. How did you do it? How did you get out of divorce? How did you do it? How, 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 how? I can only motivate them. And then one day I was telling myself, how can I help them? Because some of them are asking for jobs. I don't have a job. So I said, how can I help them? So I had this idea. Came out of this talk. That is um, Madam Halima before she became a president. The talk was about how to help women who are already divorced and have no maintenance and they're sitting at home and they have children and have no job and how are they going to live? That is the topic. My answer was, you have to empower them with skills. you got to give them not the fish, but you got to teach them how to fish. But this is talking, blah, blah, on a forum, right? I said, I've got to really walk the talk. What can I do? So I started doing classes and I started posting on Facebook and I said, okay, who wants to learn Facebook for free? I did that. So I had 2,000 people apply. I said, okay, I'm going to teach you how to sell, but you got to use Facebook how to sell. So I did a class and I taught them how to sell. Now, whatever that they sold, I got a percentage out of it. Like... If they sell, I earn. If they don't sell, I don't earn. So it's fair. And lo and behold, I actually got $10 million sales over a year, but $7.9 in 10 months. And my income in my bank account is $470,000. So I got my dreams, which is to have a birthday party for my daughter. I've never been able to even have a cake for her. Right, and I got my car, the cat, and I don't even know how to drive. And this is a very big mistake. Very big mistake, but it's a good mistake. <laughs> Why is it a mistake? Ask me later, okay? No, it's too, too much of a liability. But, um, but that smile on my mother's face, really, really, that smile on her face, that really meant the world to me, right? So moving forward, I've helped many, many other women 
okay, move in, move, like um, climb up. And one of them is Nabila. She is a single mom with a baby in her hand when she came to see me. $10,000 debt cleared her debts also. So these are the things that I do, but I really owe my credit to Mr. Jack Canfield. He is um, the author of Chicken Soup for the uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul, right? And I've learned a lot from him. So I'm just going to um, run through very quickly. I can't do all right now. But if there's one thing, one formula in Facebook that I just want to share is this. As we do in life, we participate. Facebook is a, a book with your face. <laughs> it's a Facebook. So basically, it's about you telling your book, your story on Facebook. And that's all that I have been doing. Honest to God. Seriously, I didn't use ads. I, I am just me. Like me, here, right here, right now. I tell stories. I tell about my down, my ups. I tell it I, I, when I'm sad, when I cry, when I'm up, when I'm down. I, I am me on Facebook. It's my face. It's a book. It's a story book on Facebook. And that's all I do. But I do it every day, consistently. How? Because my mother can clean toilets all around the clock with two hours sleep every day for three years for seven days a week what is facebook it's just my fingers moving come on i can't do that my mom is 60 years old she can do it so i became very disciplined because everything is urgent and i do have a why that makes me cry and that's how i found a way that made me fly so I'm just going to fly through the slides right now, right? Um, and I promise you that if you follow me on Facebook, I shall continue the conversation with you, right? And lastly, you have a why that makes you cry. You will find a way that make you fly. But before you fly, first, love yourself. Fly. Thank you.